Hey there, everybody. I've been getting some questions about what to do if you have a predator, a sexual predator in your local AA meeting. And there are some really simple steps that you can take. Uh, so the first one would be to have your local, your meeting, like your home group, if you have one, and go there and say you want to have a business meeting on this topic. And then um, at that business meeting, state what the issue is and that you want to address this. Now, if this is a um, a mixed meeting, you, you might have more problems than if it's a women's meeting or just a men's meeting. But let's let's take all scenarios. So if it's women's meeting, then what you do is you go online and you find the Paul Cleary letter to the board of Alcoholics Anonymous. It's a seven page letter. And you bring that letter, read it and bring the letter, make copies and talk about the problems that exist in Alcoholics Anonymous. So you're going to start like right where you are in your group and see what happens. And then the goal is to have a workshop, a uh, safety workshop is what I called mine. And I can put all these links below um, the materials materials that we used and that I used when I created the first safety workshop that was in Culver City, California in 2010. Uh, so you start with that. And then um, if you wanted to, I would send you some of my green pamphlet although I think it's a little outdated, I could send you that or I could put the PDF down here. Um, Alcoholics Anonymous finally was forced to, by us and probably members that were still attending, to create the yellow card, which, um, you know, any progress is progress, you think, but it, it was, it's really pretty weak. But anyway, so the next thing you want to do is you want your GSR to go to, you know, the GSR meetings that happen once a month if they happen in your area once a month and people should go and support that GSR so they don't go alone and then say they want to put on the agenda that you talk about safety in the meetings. Um, I would keep notes of what happens, who says what, and then um, you could also write some very direct small letters um, that get, you know, handwritten and sent to New York City, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous World Services, which is you know, up in Harlem, you can find all this information online. And then you also email the person you're going to call and you're going to find out, okay, who, who can we send this to? And then you actually send a letter to them. And um, when you find out like who is the new president or who is the new general service manager, you address the letter to them and then you CC all the board members. All this is online. So you can see the board members, they're all going to be listed on the tax return. And in, in the bottom, as you end the letter, you must put uh, that this letter um, is to be read to the entire board. Um, so if you send a letter to a nonprofit and you CC the board, they actually have to um, read it to the entire board. Okay, so now it goes to Alcoholics Anonymous. And the reason that you want to do that is because when I did that, when we pushed enough, there were two men who were on the board who resigned. And we could really get people to resign. The boards of nonprofits can be held accountable for things that are happening. And so some people will, will leave for many different reasons. Okay, so let's go back and bring it back to the group. Um, so, you know, I think that... <laughs> It depends on how bad it is. Like, okay, if this is rape, you got to go to the police. If you have trouble um, getting someone to do that, okay, you can't force people to do that, but you can be supportive. And you can reach me at makeaasafer at gmail.com. Uh, so, all right. So you, uh, <laughs> you have battery, which is unwanted touching. You have assault, you have rape. Um, let's go back so when it's not a criminal situation. I want to address that if this stuff happens at a sober living, at a rehab, at a sober living, at a rehab, of any 
place of work. So when it's a sober living or it's a rehab, it's actually a business. So if you're getting sexually harassed as a worker, as a counselor, or as a client, notice they don't call you a patient, they call you a client. So th these are all problems. A lot of people don't realize that they have the ability to sue in civil court for sexual harassment, just harassment, not just um, unwanted touching, which is part of sexual harassment. Uh, but as long as it doesn't get criminal, then the borderlines of criminal is, of course, battery begins criminal. And um, but the words and the, the slurs and all the, the talking that, hey, baby, are you a newcomer? And why wow, you're hot? OK, that's sexual harassment. And that's a civil thing. Now, to sue like the group because that's happening or pursue uh, suing AA, that's like an, I'm not a lawyer. But I'm going to tell you what we did, and we made change. We outed rapists. We got them arrested. Um, we we did create. I did with the help of like lots of other people. Created the literature, which created change, which really stirred things up. Um, people in the Spanish speaking community in Southern California really embraced the literature that we wrote, and so did the gay community um, in West Hollywood. The few meetings that I went to, so. Um, all right, now we're going to go back to the same point of your meeting. GSR, GSR goes to a group. So I think it's it's kind of like, this is the way I did it, that, you know, you try to go up the chain in AA, which would go from group to GSR to um, your area. And, and then from your area, you're going to meet up with your delegate and you're going to talk to your delegate about it. And that's going to be interesting. Um, that was kind of interesting when I talked to ours. And the best help that I got really was from an outsider, excuse me, um, from an outsider who was down further in San Diego, who he helped me. He gave me his ideas of how to create this safety workshop. So the, the next thing I would do is I would get a group of people. Um, if you can get some men too, men and women both to help you, you might maybe you could use about 10 people and you go to a church or go to a place where there was a meeting and you pick a date um, a month away or six weeks away. And you said it, and you know, you don't have to ask anybody, nobody in the chain. First of all, they say, oh, we're just all these independent groups. So kind of use the AA lingo on them. When people want to stop you, you can just use all that AA lingo back on them and say, oh, you know, but every group is autonomous. Every group is autonomous. So no one stopped us and no one, no one cared. Um, and if they did, we had some naysayers come to this first workshop, but uh, okay. So um you, then you need to go around to your area, or so your neighborhood, and maybe reach out a little further, and you make announcements about this safety meeting. So we did that, and that just went, it went crazy. Like people were really, they were like yelling at us, screaming at us. We went to a really big meeting where there were 300 people, a lot of young people on a Friday night. It was insane. The people were getting up and yelling and pointing, he's a 13 stepper. He is, oh, oh it, it was just like, wow. But um, we did stir up the the fire so much. And to be honest, you know, that, that meeting is gone. Um, that meeting was so stirred up. I went back later. I was going to film undercover there. The meeting shrunk from 300 people down to 15 people or 20 people. And 10 of them were being bussed in from either a rehab or sober living. So you can really do, you really do some damage um, where there's really, really, really bad predation. Uh, and I would, you know, sexual harassment. We never stopped calling it 13 stepping until I left. And then, you know, I just realized that this is sexual harassment and uh, it's widely accepted and very misogynist and very old school. But um, okay. So you have a workshop and then after you have a workshop, you're going to, you got to take the notes. And I could really go into a much longer video, which I don't want to do here of how to have um, an AA safety workshop. A little by you know step by step of what I did, and then you know maybe have some links down here. I'm not the you know the biggest techie with making these videos, and I don't want to. So anyway, we'll keep it at that right now and try to keep it simple and straightforward. Uh, if there's anything that's a crime, really try to get that person to go to the police. Uh, and sometimes we have to go with them. I went with one woman who was being grabbed all the time at a place in West LA. And the police didn't really know the laws. <laughs> we were like, yeah, it's a crime. It's called battery. 
and she wants to press charges. It's funny that even sometimes when it's a small charge that people don't want to press charges, but it's really good to do because if the person has other priors or maybe they have um, a warrant, this happened locally with not AA related, the guy had four warrants out of, for his arrest. And so the police had to come and they took him away and he was outside um, a restaurant near me and he was just, you know, uh, jacking off. So it was pretty gross. And we got them to take him away, but only because like I was willing to sit there and wait for them to come and like make my case. And it's like, no, I don't care that you're going to arrest him. And then he's going to get back out again, arrest him, inconvenience him. Not that we all have to watch this disgusting behavior or like in AA that you have to put up with this behavior. No, you don't. And I think if women and men, you know, confront people and say, Hey, you know, you can't do that here. Like that's where we, your way out of line. Uh, Okay, so one, you go to your group, you get this this Google Paul Cleary letter, um, seven page letter to board Alcoholics Anonymous, and it will come up. Um, the next thing is have that workshop, write the notes from the workshop, and you're gonna compile them. And then you wanna go back to that GSR meeting, that area meeting where there's a delegate and where there's all the other GSRs for your area. And you wanna say, you wanna read the results of that they're probably not going to let you do it. They didn't let us do it, but we did it anyway. We, you know, we had the stuff. So then we typed it up. It was a lot of work. I had a group of women who helped me and definitely some really nice men. And we typed it up and then we sent them to New York. Uh, um, it was a really hard process. And truthfully, I really had to leave AA to, to really make the changes that I wanted to make. And what happened is that uh, little by little, um, I became ostracized by the people. In the beginning, m the group that I was in of women, 45 women, most of them supported it. There were a couple who didn't. There were a couple of, you know, women who I, I think are predatory. There are predatory women who were siding with the men and like, what were we doing? They're, they're really strange, those women, but who cares about them right now? There's always going to be those people. They call them the haters, you know, the Bill Marses, you know, the haters or all the different people who are big podcasters have to deal with it. And I'm just like a little, you know, little Monica over here. But, um, okay, so you send it to New York, you know, and then you're going to follow up, you know, you put it in, a, you're going to follow up in a month. They, they wrote us back and they said, oh, this is not going on. It was like, you know, we just read a letter that was, you know, written a few years ago and you've done nothing about it. So, um Mm. what else um i think that uh getting out there and going to the police and having people the stirring up is the beginning and then after that just hit me up make a safer at gmail.com and see if you can make some changes you can tell people who are being hit on there's other places to go they could go to maybe smart recovery meetings uh they could seek out just a therapist they could they could do other things besides sit in those awful meetings so for now i just thought just a little a little short video on how do you deal with sexual predators in your group and i do know that there are many way more egregious and i get most of the stories are men sorry sorry guys i love guys but anyway um you know, men are getting such a bad rap these days, uh, especially straight men. But anyway, so there's plenty of plenty of predators and um, that are worse, that are much, much more egregious than the small things I'm talking about. But the small things I'm talking about are not small when you have just decided that you want to quit drinking um, or maybe it's drugs and that what you're dealing with is somebody trying to do that. Somebody trying to say, let's go read the big book at my house and I'm going to, and pretend that he's this loving older guy, uncle, father type. And then what is he going to do is he's going to try to have sex with you and, and maybe more and maybe worse. So um, I think like the boy Scouts, which Paul used to talk about and compare it to compare AA meetings to the boy Scouts because the way it was set up. But if you watch, there's a couple of new movies about the boy Scouts and I would, really highly recommend that you watch them. There's a brand new one and there was one that was made 
Ron Howard did one, like I think last year or the year before. They're both great. Any of the movies on sexual abuse in the church, but I think that things have made some headway. Although I think it's interesting that there was, I don't think there was a movie or a documentary made about the Me Too movement. And I think the problem with that movement was they never listened to the men who were um, in in the business, who lots of bad shit happened, excuse me, but a lot of bad things happened. And they did not listen. When the men came forward, like Anthony Edwards, it was like crickets. And there were other men. Uh, yeah. And now we're having to deal with the music industry. I was always waiting for the music industry for something to really break open. I felt like that was a really devious world. And you could see it was just getting worse and worse. Um, okay. So back to the simple stuff. Begin here. Uh, and then if you have questions, put them in the link below. Ask me the questions. Maybe I'll come in back and do another one and we can, um, excuse me, <laughs> here. It's in my face and in my mouth um, that I can answer the questions and share the literature that we used. And just like, um, you, you don't need to find a big group, but you need at least one person. If one person that's going to come with you, that they are going to become that like your little like partner in, so you're not doing this alone. I never, I did not do it alone. And when the young gal who I was doing it with I moved away, um, it became really, really hard. Like it was, it felt really, really hard then. And there were some great men who were then sticking by my side and they started to get ostracized. But just know that we outed a few rapists. They got arrested. The police went right to the, um, the clubhouse in Gotham. And so there there are things we can do. So that's that's the the video of the, the day. And I think um, we're going to stop it here. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody.